having a quorum and it's now 642. Can I call this meeting to order? 642. Uh, please do. First thing on the agenda for tonight is the review and approval of minutes for May 4th. I'll make a motion we accept the minutes from the previous month. Is there a second? A second. Is there any? Oh, God. Judy? Judy's disappeared. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. There you go. Thank you. Okay. That's as much as I can do for you, Judy. Well, she's Oops. muted. Unmute. It's not. She's, um... I don't know what happened there. She, it seems like she just either, she's still logged in, but I asked her to unmute, so we'll see if it comes back. She's still on mute, uh, she's still muted. I just asked her to unmute, so Zoom has this new thing where you can't just unmute them from a host. So she's going to have to do it. Well, where is she? Oh, I guess you. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> Does hitting Alt A uh, help unmute? This is going to be a long meeting. I'm calling her. <laughs> are you are, are you going to unmute yourself? <clears throat> well, just get uh, get out and get back on. Just go on to the link. Well, here's another way. Go to the town's website for teleconferencing and the link for the Historical Commission is there. Yeah, I don't blame you. And did we lose Jamie too now? Oh no, he's there. Okay, DCTV, do you yep. need help? If Ju what does she need? Uh, if she needs the meeting ID and password, I can give it to her through you. Uh, she just needs to find that link on the website to get back in because she's out. The link on the website. Okay, let me just find it and I will know how to get it. Meanwhile, I cannot even imagine I'm going now. I'll see you on Zoom. I can't even imagine town meeting being done with Zoom. Can you? That's what they're trying to set up.
last way, last meeting it went so well. It was pretty slick. Was Judy able to find that spot on the website that had the uh, link to it? Or is she gonna need the uh, meeting ID and password? I don't know at this point, I hung up. Okay. Hi, I'm back. I'm back. Uh, why don't we just start the meeting? Um, I mean, maybe we could go through the demos so that we why don't, don't we do that, uh, Diane. Uh, Pardon? Why don't we do that? We have a quorum. Let these people uh, uh, present their stuff and. Um, yeah, let's <coughs> with uh, we'll 11, deal with the internal stuff later. Eleven King Philip Street. Who's representing them? Uh, I am Lawrence Platt. Okay. Oh, and my wife Carrie. Okay. Good. And uh, what is the uh, what is what is it you plan to do with the uh, with your house? Uh? We're uh, renovating it. Uh, we're we're putting on a new roof, new cladding, new windows on the exterior. And I don't have it in front of me, but what what year was your house built? Uh? Uh, part, there, the house is built in stages. The uh, the original uh, year is listed as 1945 uh, to, through 1947, and, and then, then there were 1980s. I'm back. Okay. okay. Right, everybody behave now. Well, I don't know what happened. So. <laughs> matter we're now uh we just started talking about 11 king philip street well i'm here to start talking about 11 king philip and i will do that we now that i'm back uh we have received an application from mr platt which talks about windows it talks about i'm getting the application it talks about Got it right here. Roof. It talks about single story roof, remove, replace all windows, replace cedar, cedar shake siding, but it doesn't say with what. And it says got the interior, but that isn't a matter for us and remove the chim chimney. Now we received plans that show among other things, a proposed addition to the garage. There is nothing on the form that says anything about the garage. There is no, there is no addition to the garage. Well, then the form, the first, the site uh, sheet from Boucher sh says red additions cross hatched in saying proposed addition to garage. It's actually all crossed out, Judy. Well, it's uh, hard to tell what it is since we got it and it's bright red and it says proposed addition. So you're asking us to remove and replace a, a roof. You are asking to install, install new roof. You, asking, you are asking to remove and replace all windows and to replace the cedar shakes. <coughs> the plans you sent also show an addition a small addition at what I would call the east end of the house, though the plans say the west end of the house. There is a slight change of fill in something with a foundation. The, the uh, rear end of the eastern end of the house, not the western end, the eastern end of the house, we are replacing the, the uh, windows with, uh, with doors, uh, two doors and uh, and stationary lights or potentially uh, uh, four doors, moving doors. The, uh, the foundation is, we have the, uh, we have like a, what do you call it? A one, two, three. Uh, we have 
two angled windows currently, and we're going to eliminate the, the footing underneath those angled windows and square it off and uh, replace it with, uh, with replacement doors and windows. And in squaring it off, you're putting in a new foundation. We're squaring it off, correct. Uh, are you aware that because of that site map from Boucher, that you are within the floodplain zone, which means you're going to have to build Stonehenge in order to change those foundations. Uh, don't know what that means, Stonehenge, and that well, that portion of the property is not in the flood. flood. The portion of the property where the new foot, footings and foundation are going is not in the flood zone. The flood zone is delimited uh, by the uh, existing garage. Uh, it's a small portion of the existing garage that uh, that is within the flood zone, and it's the low velocity flood zone. The building inspector told me today that whenever any part of a house is involved in the floodplain, then the whole house is considered in the floodplain, which means that change you make to that end of the house and what looks like a foundation uh, on the patio on the south side, side of the house will have to be done with the seriously reinforced foundations. I'm calling it Stonehenge, but you saw the things that uh, are happening at the house on Smithnick Road. Those tall concrete towers and all that goes with it are part of what you have to do if you change the foundation at all. Um, that's not what the zoning uh, officer told me. You know, so, it's what the building inspector told me today. Well, the zoning officer, who's the building inspector's boss, told me that uh, that we did not have to raise the house. Uh, so it sounds like, it, once again, I'm experiencing conflicting uh, information. But um, I, I, I think that's worthy of uh, further investigation because I've been told that that's not the case, that we have to bring the entire house uh, up to uh, uh, up to the floodplain standard. In fact, I'm not told, saying the whole house. I'm saying the parts that you change. The mm. parts that I change are the foot. The uh, I'm changing a small area of the footing uh, mm. of an existing wall. That is what the building inspector told me today. Has to be floodplain standard. Okay, so, can I just jump in with a question here? Yes. We're calling building inspector, we're calling zoning enforcement officer. I want these people named so I know who we're talking about. So building inspector, Judy, who did you speak to? Oh, I talked to the building inspector and I can't put a name on him right now. I talked to him on the phone. He yeah, called me. I didn't call him. In charge of the uh, building department? Is it David? No, it was not David. It was. Um, I, I can. I can help you here. Please. Just give me one second, please. Uh, David Quina is the zoning officer, and I. No, I, David Quina is the in charge of the building department. But he's also the zoning enforcement okay. officer. They, he wears that title as well. Okay. Well, then his underling, who is the building inspector, disagrees with him. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with the building department head and the zoning enforcement officer. In which case, let us assume perhaps, and we may do this with uh, another property being discussed tonight, that we put conditions on this, that the plan we approve can be built as it is designed. <sighs> any input from any other commission members? No. We need a motion. Uh, yeah. we, need, we need to know what the condition is, pending resolution of... Pending approval of the plans as submitted, which I have in my hands, I sent you some of, but mm -hmm. I'm the first to tell you the building department was not cooperative about sending them out. So I sent 
portions of them out from my telephone. Hmm. Make a, well, this is someone kind of should make a motion to let him go about having the building uh, started and in the meanwhile have the inspector come out and go over the plan and make the correction. I think the building department needs to agree that this can be done according to the plans as shown. And in that case, you would be fine with it. The, the plans I have in my hand, some of which I sent to you. Well, I make a motion that uh, let this person uh, proceed with his building and let the permit go. Is that Philip? We yes. can't, we can't approve the permit. We can approve, we can give him permission to make the changes on the outside of the building as he chooses. And that does not include the garage, even though we got the plan for the garage. It includes windows and roof and uh, a couple of small additions to that house. Let him, let him go ahead with the plan that he has so that he can get the, his home, the building started. Excuse me. Is there a second for that? Second. Any further discussion? So therefore we are passing on this uh, to let him go ahead with the plans as they are formulated in our hands at the moment, uh, which is fine with me. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. No. I'm, I'm uh, going to abstain from this vote because I am too close to it. I, am, I vote no on this. Okay. So we still had, it, there's still three yes and one no. One no. I didn't hear a third yes, but I'll. Okay, let's start over again. Who's Diane. voting? Diane. Yes. Diane is no. I'm a no. Yes. Who's yes? Philip. Jordan. Yay. Who else? Bob Smith? Yes. Okay. And that's what we have. Oh, damn. Uh, oh, Jamie, yes or no? Jamie, yes or no? Um, I, I, I'm not, I, I need to review with you what the motion is exactly. Are we saying that the proposed uh, siding, we approve the new roofing, the new windows is called out in the application. We're saying that is okay with the commission, but is there a caveat uh, to further understanding um, what the building department allows? Is that how I understand the motion? Yes. Uh, well, I don't know that he put a caveat in it. He said, according to the plans, and the plans show new foundation at the end of the house and on a small patio area on the south side of the house. Okay. To help However, he accomplishes those footings. That's not okay. our business. All right. To help me further understand it, could Judy, um, I mean, uh, could Diane please tell me why she's voting no to it? Maybe either she sees something in it that I don't understand and why she'd be opposed to this. I'm voting no because on the basis of only a couple of pages of the plans mm -hmm. and also there's still this question about the floodplain in my mind mm -hmm. and what we say here as we list off what we're approving there is still the plans and there's still you know there's still the permit here mm -hmm. so I'm sorry that I have to vote no, but I feel the information is confusing to me personally because I'm not seeing the big, you know, the whole picture. The yes. plan so I'm voting no. Okay, the plan show new foundation. It is not our business to stipulate how that foundation is built. I was only trying to help the owner by telling him what the building department told me today. That is not our concern. That's the building department who's going to tell him what he has to do on that site. 
what we're just saying is that he can build those little bump outs at the end of the house and he can do a foundation of some sort um, on his patio. But uh, Diane, you're feeling because there's missing or conflicting information, you don't feel comfortable no, voting. I just don't feel comfortable. I mean, you know, we're always giving, uh, we, we give a lot of approvals on this commission and in this day, day of the pandemic and the fact that the building department uh, is not giving us all the information we need to make an educated decision, I just don't feel comfortable. I see. That's so, all. I mean, but if the rest of you feels comfortable, you know, I'm just voting my conscience. Well, I'm, I'm working towards a decision. So you think it needs, uh, it needs to be sorted further. You need more information to make an informed decision about it. Mm -hmm. And you think uh, you're, uh, you're within uh, the purview of the commission. Um, no. Yeah, to not to no. vote. No, no. You're voting no because of a question of the plan. The, the gentleman's trying to get his roof, windows, and chimney done and everything else that's involved. Then the building department has to be involved to question the floodplain. Yes. Look. Correct. Um, we will I think there's a majority in. who is voting in favor of this. <coughs> Can we just move on with my vote of conscience as no and get on with it? We well, have well, we have more positives than negatives, and so therefore Yeah. You were waiting for my vote. You were waiting for my vote as well. I was waiting for your vote, yes. So I wanted to just uh, make a query for Diane. Um, and uh, <clears throat> well, then back to you, Judy. You bring up this whole issue regarding what uh, the inspector told you today. Why did you bring that up if it's not germane to historical commission review? Exactly. I, I brought it up because I wanted to understand what the building inspector told me today because I felt that might influence the owner's plans if he has to pay 10 times the amount that a normal foundation would cost to put in a floodplain foundation. But if he is willing to accept whatever the building department says with regard to foundation, then we're clear to vote for. Well, all right. And then I have a question for the plats, just more specifics on the materials you plan on using, et cetera. I mean, we, we brush on that in the application, but tell me what the current siding is, is it painted or is it uh, weathered uh, white cedar? What's, what's going on? What, what do, what is the uh, new um, roofing shingles, materials, et cetera? What are the windows? Are they double hung? Are they casement, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, all of those will be spelled out on the building application, the building permit application, and a set of drawings will be submitted because that's the requirement. But let me tell you what we've got currently. We have a, a, a cedar shape siding, which will be replaced with an, uh, uh, a, uh, an eastern white cedar siding kiln drive. Uh, the roof is currently asphalt uh, shingle. Uh, uh, on the majority of the house, there are two dormers that have rubber, uh, rubber, uh, you know, membrane. Though all roofs will be replaced with asphalt shingle, and the windows are a mishmash over. Many years, uh, there are some original uh, single pane windows. There are some windows that are um, insulated. Uh, they're all, except for sliding doors, uh, they are mostly all double hung. They will be, re be replaced by mostly double hung. <laughs> there are currently uh, two, uh, uh, one, two, uh, three, three, four locations, four windows that have our awning styles. Those, the, there are approximately uh, four windows that are going to be replaced with the awning style window. Um, and uh, I, I think that, um, uh, I think that addresses, uh, oh, the, the window style, we have six uh, currently in place in part of the house, we have six over ones 
we also have multi lights um, and uh, we will be replacing uh, nearly all of the double hung windows by six over ones. Either Marvin or Anderson. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, that, I, I think that addresses the questions that you asked. Did, you ha did I answer you completely? If you are doing cedar shingles replaced with cedar uh -huh. shingles, that's like for like, so that doesn't even concern us. That was unclear. There was no, that was not clear on the application. And that's good to hear that you're replacing cedar shingles with cedar shingles. Okay, thank you. And the asphalt roof is, is similar. Somebody at some point in time put a rubber membrane, membrane roof. They must have had some kind of roofing uh, leak issues. Uh, and uh, someone else before us uh, elected to change the roof. We're, we're going back to the original style of roof that was installed, which is an asphalt tile. And the asphalt tile, again, as it, in its current, the house's current condition, the asphalt tile is uh, what uh, it is the majority of all of the roofs on the existing house, house are asphalt tile. I would guess we've covered most of it, have we? There's Jamie now. Jamie. Seemed to have dropped off. Oh dear. This technology is uh, something else. Either lost Is there any other comment on Jamie? Where, what happened to Jamie? He either lost his connection uh, to the internet or he dropped out accidentally. Um, so he's going to have to log back in. He's got to log back in because he was asking the questions. I'm certainly satisfied, but I'm not voting on this because uh, I know too many of the here. parties involved and I live in Nonquit. Jamie is here. Uh huh. I'm back. Okay. Okay. Do you have any further anything further to say? Well, I uh, when I was positing my questions with the plats, that's when my computer froze and I heard nothing. So, huh. um, I can give you a quick summary, Jamie, if you okay. would like. Thank you. We're, we, in essence, we are replacing cedar uh, siding with cedar white cedar. Uh, siding. We are replacing all the roofs with the asphalt shingle. Uh, the existing roof condition has two small dormer roofs that were replaced by rubber membrane. We are replacing all roofs with asphalt shingle and unifying the uh, I, can I we wait until the, um, the phone stops? The last piece of this is there were questions about the existing windows uh, and what were they? The existing windows are a mishmash uh, of different style windows over the lifetime of the house. Some of which uh, of the existing windows include, uh, most of them are, are double hung. Some of them are single pane, uh, not, you know, not uh, single pane, non-insulated windows. Some of the uh, windows have been replaced on the south side of the house, and those are double hung windows, six over ones. Uh, they're insulated glass. We have some insulated sliding doors, two, uh, two sets. Uh, those are going to be removed and replaced with cedar siding. And uh, the, all the, the balance of the windows uh, in, throughout the house are mostly double hung, six over ones. And there are a couple of awning style windows that uh are also going to be reinstalled um there are approximately four uh awning style windows at present uh and we're replacing with approximately four uh may, maybe three awning style windows uh, uh, uh at the time of replacement and and just to recap on the last bit the um what would be the eastern end where i think you have two bay windows that you're eliminating and replacing with new windows. You're replacing these because you feel they're unattractive, outdated, not consistent with the character of the building, and what's the reason behind that? Uh, the, reason is, the reason is uh, quite simple. We, we, are, uh, we, we live here year round. We are uh, fitting out the house for our retirement years. 
We are bringing the house up to current standards. We're insulating everything. We're replacing windows so that we uh, save energy. We're quite echo-minded in, in terms of what we're endeavoring to do. And uh, the, the windows that, th there are single, pla uh, single pane plate glass windows. And for safety reasons, we, we want to replace them with modern uh, windows that uh, are not uh, non-safety glass. That yes. we want, the replacements we want to be safety glass. So uh, we're not going to change the, uh, the, view the view lines or the exposure. We're going to have all uh, glass back there. We're just replacing it uh, so that we have modern uh, windows that will take us through uh, what we hope to be a long retirement. Yes, all right, thank you. Well, as I understand it, and would you agree or confirm, affirm that um, the proposals you're uh, the uh, changes you're proposing are keeping in the character and the spirit of the house One, and non-quit as a community as a whole? 100%. Okay. In fact, everything that we're proposing is an improvement uh, and is in keeping with the majority of the homes that uh, uh, exist in Nonquit. We're very se architecturally sensitive mm -hmm. to I understand. Uh, okay. what, what we're proposing and what we're doing. And I've been coming here for 40 years to Nonquit, so I'm well acquainted with community yes, and how they like things, so no worries. Okay, I, under I understand. Well, so with, with that information you provided, I'm, I'm willing to vote in the affirmative for your, um, the, the, the items on your application before the commission. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, that, that being the case, the uh, that uh, passes, and we wish you well as you go forward through all the other things you need to do to satisfy this town to make this possible. In which case, Thank let's you. move on. You are Thank welcome you. if you'd like to stay with us for the rest of the meeting, but should you like to eat supper, you're welcome to do that also. <laughs> Much appreciated. Thank we you. will. We will. Uh, we thank you all for your time uh, and attention, and uh, we wish you a good night. Thank you. Right. Next, I would like to take up Forty Nine Beach Avenue. Forty Nine Beach Avenue is Here. represented by the new owner. Yes, Grace, and um, I'm Grace's son, Chris. Hello, Chris. Talk to us about what is happening there and why you need to do it. So currently the town has some cons um, just some preliminary drawings um, of the um, what we're proposing to to put there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I know there was some questions regarding the height of the structure. We would be conforming with um, the town's regulation on what uh, what that is, but currently the design on hand shows that the highest peak would be at 33 um, feet. Okay, thank you for that piece of information. 33 feet above mean grade, is that right? I'm sorry? Is that 33 feet above mean grade level? Or yes, sir. grade level, okay. Uh, I, have a, I have a question about that since you bring that up right from the beginning. I, I think we sort of gone past what this building is, its historic character within a historical summer colony. But uh, let's talk about the height of the building since that's the thing that you did in fact bring up. Uh, where are you measuring the height from? Um, the adjacent grade, which is, uh, would be the, uh, the new gra uh, basement garage level? Or, are you, or what's your basis for adjacent grade and establishing a height of 33 feet? I believe the architect mentioned that was from um, on hand, you'll see the, um, the uh, front door, mm -hmm. so that level there. Yeah, um, I think that needs some investigation in terms of international building code because the adjacent grade is established at the lowest point that has over 50% of exposure. So that, okay. that now we're looking at our, our, your garage level and you're proposing to dig out and excavate and to do um, a garage there. So whether that's in the purview of the commission, I just mentioned that namely because you brought it up first,
but two, it might, this is, might be a matter of concern for all your neighbors in this historic association community, uh, the, the overall height you're, you're, you're achieving. Um, right. So um, a, adjacent grade is not established so the, the threshold finished floor elevation of a house. It's actually established where, well, typically where the ground plane meets the foundation and then you start measuring up from there. Okay. Well, yeah, and again, I mean, these are just early designs and whatever gets um, we finalized, we will present and we will be following um, to code what um, what is allowed. But currently our plan would be to eliminate the current structure and put in something new. We, uh, yeah, I understood that. If I could just follow up, I don't mean to take up all the time, but we currently have a, an existing historic building there with 800 plus square feet, right? Eight, four, Correct. six, or something like that. A, a small cottage. Mm -hmm. And you see small cottages every day, like for instance, over at Oak, Oak, Oak Bluffs and, and Martha's Vineyard, and everybody seems to live quite happily there and they command a very high price and half million dollar range. Uh, what's the square estimated square footage of this new construction you're proposing? What will be the total? We sent, um, the architect's still working on the plans, but I think he sent to um, Judy uh, Lund some um, um, some papers to, um, to let her know what we looking for. Yes, but what is, what is the proposed square footage you're wanting I, to achieve? I, I want to say on average, it's probably about 1,700. 1,700. So, and you have, um, including the basement or just including, um, uh, I believe that would include the basement. So, okay. So that's, you shall not touch. So, but you have four floors. Uh, so that's at like 800, 800 square feet of floor. Yes, sir. So three times three floors times 800 would be, uh, would be, what would that be? Uh, six, 1600. And then you have a fourth floor up in the attic. What's your estimated square footage up in that portion of the building? Do you know? Well, um, what we were um, think about it's having on the first floor, the garage, the living space, one bedroom. And the second floor having two bedrooms mm -hmm. and um, a TV room. Yes. That's what we're looking for. But again, the, um, the architect's still working on the plans. Right. And we will follow what we have to follow uh, about codes and everything because we want, this is our retirement house. <clears throat> and we want to, um, to make something to, to enjoy, but also um, our neighbors be happy with us too. You know what I'm saying? I understand. We're very okay. easy people. Okay. okay, just to wrap up my comments, uh, we're taking a historic house, Gambrel roof, uh, built possibly in the 1871 or at least the last quarter of the 19th century. Um, and it's a story and a half. And we're basically taking it per the architect's conceptual drawings, anywhere from a three or four story building. So you're more than doubling really the height and the impact that it would have on the street and your community. So it's, it's a very ambitious plan. Um, so that's what I wanted to add and that's sort of a conclusion of my comments on your proposal. Okay. And okay. I would like to raise the question uh, the building department has said you can build this house on this property. That is the issue that concerns me because you're doing a great deal of lot coverage on a very small lot. And I would like to be assured if this goes forward that you are allowed to rebuild bigger than the footprint of the original house. Yes, the, uh, the architect uh question all of that and that's the reason we're gonna put in the house down because it's a very small house 
uh, and we want to build uh, a house at least with three bedrooms. Oof. Does anybody else have any questions? Are there any setback issues uh, in in that area? I don't know. The standard setbacks for Dartmouth are 20, 10, and 10. And I think they meet that. The bigger issue in my mind is that this is a, a, uh, an area where two acre zoning is in place. And I don't know that uh, they can enlarge the footprint. I know there are some cases in Nonquit where they have not been allowed to enlarge the footprint on a very small lot. And so this is what concerns me. Um, and so if we pass this and allow them to do that, it should be in the condition that the building department would allow them to replace that house. And I say that because I don't want to see an empty lot there if they take the house down and then find they cannot rebuild. Well, exactly. That's a good point, Judy. And uh, I think we should have plans approved by the building department before we, before we, uh, um, can, can I, can I add some thoughts to, to, as we move closer to making a decision? Sure. Certainly. Okay. Um, I feel we haven't really touched much on it being a historic house and contributing house to that old summer colony in that neighborhood that populates so much uh, of, of Dartmouth and give character and have value to our community. As I mentioned, those on Oak Bluff are, are all similar sizes to that. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards um, making a motion when the time is appropriate that would state that that the we uh, the building is considered hi historic and preferably preserved, thus enacting a three month stay in that or, or the six month stay. I'm sorry, during that stay, that plans could properly be developed both to the benefit of the homeowners, but also to their community, their abutters, who could then have more time uh, and a chance to to develop an a plan and a building that's, uh, that pleases everyone. Having caveats and conditions on something if we were to prove it right now, that's, I don't see how enforceable that is. Well, our process is such that if we declare this historic, we have to go to a public hearing on this. And at the time of the public hearing, we decide whether it's preferably preserved. Yes, I, under I understand that, I suppose. Yes, I'm sorry, I, I jumped the gun on the process, but that is what I'd be leaning towards to make a, to make a more informed and safe decision uh, as a historic commission member. Uh, well, I would also add that I have the uh, document from the assessor's database um, the size of this lot, unless the assessor's database is incorrect, is 0.13 of an acre. Yeah, it's a very small lot. Very and the, small. those plans pretty much go to the setback lines all around it. And uh, uh, that is the way I look at the plans I sent them around. Uh, but I sent them by phone, so they're very hard to read. Um, and I would like to add, are there any members of the community out there on this Zoom meeting who are listening in or, or want to make comment? Uh, uh, yeah, there are, aren't there? There are people out there. I don't know that they choose to make comments. I can only see Bob Smith, Diane, and <laughs> the owner of the property, so I can't see if anybody's raising their hands, but maybe. Yeah, yeah Melissa uh, is right Alice's. Go ahead, Melissa. Hi, we look forward to these great new neighbors, and we, we look forward to seeing something other than an eyesore. And we look forward to seeing a, a beautiful house within the confines of the setbacks and, and, and all, um, all the things necessary for them to enjoy their retirement home and their family. So uh, that's what this is all about. For, for over 20 some odd, even close to maybe 30 years, um, 
the Henry's home has unfortunately been sort of deteriorating. But we love the new neighbors, and, um, and a house within the setbacks will just be beautiful. So we look forward to, uh, to seeing something like that. But I, I think it's, um, it's a home that is fairly, um, has been fairly neglected over the years, as historical as it, as it is. So um, um, uh, I, 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 I respectfully uh, would like to differ. I, I went in that house when it was on the market, selling for the high in the high, high 400s. So I'll apologize for the price there. Um, it didn't seem like a house that was in a decline. It seemed to be uh, fair to good shape, not poor shape. Um, I think it adds value to the community if, you, if there is something um, either remodeled or rebuilt that's more in keeping in the scale. Uh, so it, whenever we're yeah, at a can time, can whenever we, we're at a time, continue? okay, let me just wrap up. Uh, I'll wrap up my comments right now. Um, whenever it were a time to make a motion, I I like to make a motion. Thank you. I will remember that. Brad Ellison, I'd like to follow up and finish on this. Um, when when the when the house was put on the market, they went in there and they did some cosmetic renovations. The realtors didn't let people down into the basement to see the lally columns that were twisted and ready to pop out of place, which would drop the floor. Um, mold was painted over. If you go to the house now. The two second floor windows are boarded up because they were just cosmetically painted over. They're blown out during storms. The roof leaks, the second floor leaks onto the first floor. I have personally boarded up windows on the second floor, first floor, and all the basement windows over the years. It, you walk on the floor and you kind of question whether you're gonna end up in the basement at times. And if you're on the second floor, anytime it rains, there's a huge puddle in both rooms up on, the, on that level. And you know, this, this is a property for 20 years that I have been looking at and I have been taken care of because the owners have neglected it and just walked away from it. So, I mean, anybody that went and looked at it when it was an open house saw fresh paint, was not allowed to go into the basement, didn't, you know, and again, I was the fire chief in this, this community for over three years. We pumped out the basement for three years from flooding of broken pipes in that house. So every winter, pipes would break, basement would uh, flood, and everything would float around. Again, the realtor was not letting people in the basement to see any of that. So I have concerns about that property as a professional that you shouldn't have people living in that or restore it the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we have another, another person who wants to speak. Who is the lady? Uh, what's your name? Hi, I'm Joan. I live, <clears throat> I live across the street from this house. And my, um, I've been in it many times before it was, before it was um, painted to make it look better. Um, it is totally uninhabitable. It is totally uninhabitable. The stairs are dangerous. The floors are spongy. You would not want to live there. And it's, um, the outside is also deteriorated. So I know we're talking to the historic commission, not the planning board or the zoning board, but from a historic point of view, um, there's nothing still to it that I would say is of the, um, value of the other historic properties here in Bayview. It's definitely, there was no question to any of us in this neighborhood that it was a complete teardown. And it did not sell anywhere near the price that it was offered at. It was, um, I guess it's public record now, it was sold basically for the price of the land. I don't think anybody would ever have thought about living there. And um, we have met the new neighbors and we are very excited for them to move in to build a lovely house in keeping with the neighborhood. Yes, I think it sold for three hundred thousand, or at least that's what the record, public record, three and something. Paid. I think right, right, because it's really the place of the land. No one expected ever to live there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your part. Thank uh, you. Any other commission members have anything more they want to say? Anybody have anything more they want to say? How about Nina, do you want to say anything? No, thank you. I'm just listening to my sister and um, and Joan. But thank you for asking. Okay, Jamie is asked to make a motion. Yes. Well, um, 
my motion is that um, we consider the house historic. Looks like Andrea, wait, 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 Andrea White, White, you need to Sorry, unmute Andrea. yourself. Unmute yourself. There you go. We are. Okay. Hi, can you hear us? Yep. Yes. Hi, I'm uh, Don White Jr. My father right here lives in the house right next to it. I just literally looked out back for your edification and there are four windows boarded up um, and half of them are not boarded up over the total window. And the back door for one whole season was totally open and it would not close. Just, I wish I could take a picture and send it to show how derelict it is. That's all I Thank say. you. Thank you. Yeah, hi. This is Don White Sr. Um, we uh, built this house uh, 14 years ago, replacing a 100 year old house, which I'm sure Julie Lund and Diane. I'm still remember. crying over it. <laughs> so, here, so here we are, 10 feet away from the barnacle, which was moved many, many years ago into the corner, apparently to avoid the water tower which was right smack in the middle of the lot. Anyhow, that's historic. It's um, maybe not relevant. Uh, we welcome new neighbors. Uh, we have had to look at this shabby building. And you think it's bad in front, you ought to see it from the back. Uh, anyhow, we welcome the new neighbors. We uh, hope that they're going to be happy, and I'm sure they will, in this wonderful neighborhood. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, John. Uh, Jamie has made a motion. Does someone on the commission wish to second it? Uh, Jamie, could you repeat that motion again, please? He wants to make the home a historical site. <laughs> Philip, let's let Jamie repeat his motion, or we should let. Yes, please let Jamie repeat it so I can write it properly. Unmute, Jamie. Jamie, unmute. I don't even, oh, there he is. He's at the. There we go. I'm sorry. So, Repeat your motion, please. Yeah. Uh, the motion is that we consider the house historic so that it moves on to be considered a preferably preserved house. Um, Not necessarily. We, all we do at this stage is to name it historic, which okay. would mean we go to public hearing. Okay, that's my motion then. We leave it as simple as that. That's the way it needs to be framed. Okay. okay. I second the motion. Okay. Is there any further discussion of that? I'd like uh, commission members to identify themselves and vote. Before we move on, however this, uh, this is Bob Smith. Uh, However, this uh, ends up after tonight's meeting. Um, you know, I hear what the neighbors are saying and, and the, the terrible condition of the house and so on, but I would just like to make sure that we have documentation, uh, photographic documentation of, uh, of the house as it is. Uh, I think there's some pretty good stuff in the files already, but. Um, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. And um, I just, we just need, I would like us to have permission to uh, photograph and, and take measurements of the house. Of course, it's not a problem. On the assessor's uh, database, the house is fully measured. Yeah, it is. I'm looking at it now. So all you, we certainly could take we what you're asking is permission to walk on the property to take pictures all around it. I, the picture yeah. in Ron de Pippo's book, the early picture from about 1900, in fact, came out of our files. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we voting on my motion? Yes, um, uh, Philip yes. seconded it. Philip seconded it. So now we have, I would like the members of the commission to identify themselves and vote. Diane. I vote uh, yes, Jamie's motion, yes. Someone else. I'm Jordan and I vote yes. I'm Jamie and I vote yes for the uh, motion I proposed. I, Phil Baker, vote yes. 
Okay. Right, this is Bob Smith. I vote yes. Bob. Yes. Bob. I uh, would, if I have to vote, and I don't have to vote because we have a clear uh, sense, uh, I would vote no because I think this could go forward. But since it's, I'm the only one dissenting, we will now have to plan a public hearing in which we discuss this. We will take pictures before that time and we will discuss whether it is necessary to put a six month delay on this demolition. In the meanwhile, I hope that the owners before this public hearing, which will probably be two or three weeks away, uh, I hope that the owners will be able to answer a few of these questions to be mm -hmm. certain what the allowable height is, the lot coverage, and that they are in fact allowed to build essentially from setback to setback. I think uh, this puts okay. a couple of weeks um, to do this. Uh, I will also mention that one of our regulars, but not a member of the commission, suggested it might be possible to move this house off the property. And we can discuss that at the public hearing as well. If that's a possibility, it would save the owners, of course, the cost of demolition and getting rid of all the stuff. Oh yes, I will be glad. And there might be someone who is interested in moving this house. It's been moved before, it's a very small house that probably wouldn't be difficult to move. Uh, but these are all issues that we will take up since um, it appears that you have all voted to um, take this to public hearing. So as soon as uh, I post that, and as I've explained to the commission and I will expand to you, the town only has two lines for Zoom meetings. And so this meeting, our meeting had to be put off a week from our normal meeting because someone else already had the Zoom lines. We uh, are going to have to have a meeting next Monday in order to discuss a property that fell through the cracks. So it might be two weeks from Monday. I'll see what Jamie, what uh, Peter can do to provide us with a time for a meeting. Uh, that being the case, I thank you. We will notify the building department that this is the decision we have made. And that moves us on to 1128 Tucker Road, who has been very patient at this point. You're welcome to stay thank with you. us if you want, but you don't have to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 1128 Tucker Road is... Uh, hello. Hello, there you are. Yeah. That's Jim. Okay, talk to us about 1128. Uh, well, there's an ex the existing structure is uh, was built in 1938, and uh, there's currently vinyl siding on it uh, and a mismatch of windows also. And what we plan to do is renovate the um, the existing structure and then put in addition. Uh, onto the onto the side of it. So, and you did send plans. Yep, I sent plans and uh, an existing and uh, what we propose to do. And uh, I don't know if everybody got that or I I I, I should have maybe sent five copies. Of well, that. the truth of the matter is we need to update our uh, requirements to include electronic filing because. This has shown us the building department is shorthanded. They don't have enough staff to do what needs to be done. And so I'm sitting on everything. They said they were unable to send things out electronically. And okay. so I have photographed a number of things and sent them around uh, to the members, but I did not send every copy that came with each application because yeah. sending them by my phone makes them rather difficult. Um, Thank you. You told us what you want to do to this small cape um, and people have the pictures. Does anybody have any comments, questions? Uh, I have a question. I, I, I couldn't identify the house uh, on a drive-by, which is virtually, a drive-by is virtually impossible because 
there are so many people coming at you and yep. behind you on that road. Yeah, so uh, I couldn't figure out, is it that house that's hidden behind the trees with no apparent entrance to it? Yes, yep, it's um, adjacent to Friends Academy. Okay, and then for the looking at the front of the house to the to the right of that, there's some sort of garage structure. Is yes, that part of the property. Yep. It is. Okay, and is is that involved with your um, with your uh, initially? No, and uh, we might want to make it uh, involve I, but for right now, it's just the um, the, the house. Okay, and the house was built in 1938. Is that right? yes? Yep. All right, and it has vinyl vinyl siding, which will you know continue probably with the with the new addition, and uh, but it will replace it with new. And where was the entrance to the house? I'm curious because uh, that's a very tricky place to get into, isn't it? Yeah, there's an entrance on the uh, left side, no. and also on the back. Mm -hmm. oh. On the Friends Academy side. Yes. Okay. Which which we uh, plan on uh, boarding that side up, keeping the back entrance, and then uh, an additional entrance in the front with the addition. And um, is it is it Mr. Eilerton? Is that how you yeah, pronounce it? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jamie O'Day here. I just have a quick question or two. Uh, uh, during this uh, remodeling project, are you intending? to cover the entirety of the house, the addition and the existing house with the new siding. Yes. All right. And, uh, and um, what are, just so I better understand the look you'll achieve. I mean, are you appreciating that this is a 1938 kind of bungalow slash gable front house and that sort of thing? And, and, and have you chosen a, a, a premium vinyl siding to cover the house or? What's the material and the product? Uh, yeah, it is a. It will be a premium uh, vinyl siding, uh, and we're going to put a farmer's porch in the front, which I think might make it look more yes. uh, historical or in yeah. in keeping with that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 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 not that it's any really of my business, but is there a, a color decided on the new vinyl siding? Uh, probably a beige uh, color, but we. Um, you know, we're even thinking about maybe going with a uh, a clapboard, a wooden clapboard in the front and keeping the sides mm -hmm. uh, a shingle, uh, I mean, uh, the vinyl siding, but that hasn't been decided, so I'd rather tell you that uh, we're going to go with a high, uh, high grade uh, vinyl siding. Yes, I understand. And then, refresh my memory, I know you've probably touched on this, but I'm forgetting. What what are the condition of the windows and what are what are any windows being replaced or portions of the windows or yeah uh, no we don't have to replace them okay. somebody has done that already okay. with uh, high efficiency windows okay great thank yeah. you that that sort of wraps up my questions I believe I just have one other question Diane, you, you want to go yeah um, since uh, we didn't get the full plans if you could just just describe for me where your addition is going sure uh on the on the right side and uh what it will consist of is an office area and a, a living room and a bathroom okay on the, on the first floor that will um change the look of you know change the footprint of the house it's not going in the back it's going on the side yes yep so the original house will stay exactly like it is yeah. except it'll have an addition on the on the right side that will uh, the form says uh remodel an existing house and add an extension to the right side of the house yeah i know yes. but i'm having a hard time reading this because it's so uh Blurry, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. And um, I don't know if you can, I don't know, can you see? Oh, oh brilliant. Yes, yes, That's okay. tremendously helpful, yes, thank you. Oh, yes, all right. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> oh, it'll look God. really nice. We're not really changing the existing house at all, uh, other than adding the uh, addition to it. Yes, I think you're doing quite an improvement. 
Yeah, okay. Now that I can visualize it, or I can see it, never mind visualize, then I understand what you're trying to do. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, the comment I wanted to make is that um, uh, frequently when uh, these uh, vinyl sidings are put on, uh, there's a trim that's I mean, it's maybe part of a kit, which is a very narrow, um, uh, very narrow trim board. And uh, I like to see uh, a, uh, a wider trim board, like a six inch corner, corner boards, if there are corner boards. Right, um, right. Something like that. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Azek makes, uh, is, a, is a brand. There are lots of brands that uh, are uh, just yep. gives the, uh, uh, it takes away the look of a, of a uh, pure vinyl thing and kind of. Right, yeah, and obviously in that neighborhood, we want to stay away from that also. And we are planning on doing that in, uh, what's it, uh, the, the, the water board on the yeah, bottom will be? We're, we're going to do a six inch fluted uh, corner board. <laughs> and we're going to do, this might be the builder. And then we're going to do a um, water board on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, one, by, one, by, one by eight on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And um, when you say six inch fluted, it's like a pilaster kind of thing with a. With it's fluted on the corner boards. Yeah. On the corners, yeah, it's fluted. Fluted. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that going to be an ASEC type product or? It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Obviously, we want to make this fit the area too. You know. Mm -hmm. Capitalize, I guess you could say. Yeah. Right. Any other comments, questions? No, not me. Oh. Somebody gonna make a motion? I make a motion we accept the demo and <laughs> let the uh, person proceed with the renovations. I second that. I... Thank you. Is there any further discussion no. on this motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi. Anyone opposed? Go with it. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> we will let the building department know and uh, then you can go forward and get your permit as quickly as I, you can. I think you'll be happy with it. Everything's moving slowly these days. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to be signing off now. Okay, Bye don't worry you. Uh, yeah. Good night. Uh, the next thing that we have on our the next uh, list of houses I have is this problem over seven Perry because the town hall lost the application and I talked today after saying we might be able to do it I talked to Lynn and she said we cannot do this as an emergency meeting tonight because I only got the application today and therefore the clock starts today. So it's not an emergency as far as time is concerned for us to do this. So uh, I've talked to Peter about uh, having a brief Zoom meeting next Monday night at 6.30 where we can consider 7 Perry Street. So now moving on to the business and it's already quarter of eight. Uh, MHC grant. Diane, can you briefly say three words about where we are? It's ongoing. We just, uh, Linda, Judy, and myself just reviewed and made comments on 20 uh, new drafts of the survey project. Uh, so that's on its way or it has been received. So now we're waiting for drafts for batch three. But we have not yet heard MHC's comments on batch one. No, we have not. If you want to add to it, that's more than three words. Okay. So Thanks. that's where we're at. You know, as we learn more, then you'll hear more. If anybody wants to know, uh, you know, see anything about this, you know, you're welcome. Uh, and so that takes care of our process. We're just moving right along okay um you want to say anything about cpc yes uh 
we did have a meeting on May 5th. And uh, some of the topics we talked about was uh, the Dartmouth Regional Park uh, related to the dog park. Uh, this nonprofit organization has been uh, working very hard to raise money and to move forward with this. It's been going on for years, so we discussed that. Yada, yada, uh, yada. Yada, yada. Uh, and then we um, talked about the Russell Garrison and the Town Pound, and I also gave an update on the historic building inventory. Good. So that was the essence of our meeting uh, with CPC, and we're not having a CPC meeting this month. And Buddy sent me a communication. Uh, we're ready, as far as spending money is concerned, we have spent all the money we are going to spend on both the garrison and the pound, except for the sign for the pound. But both of these perhaps need a preservation restriction because in general, when CPC money goes into something, there needs to be a preservation restriction. But he said he wasn't sure since the garrison project was a research project, and the pound project was basically a, a cleanup project that they needed PRs. And he said he would take it up with CPC at his next meeting, but since his next meeting's a month away, that's on hold for the time being. Um, we've never gotten Bob Harding tonight, have we? No. Nope. Nope. So he, he would have told you that uh, he's gotten a contract for printing up the Quaker records, which is a wonderful thing. Um, you can read about it in um, Dartmouth Week. Dartmouth Week has a write-up. He also passed it out to everybody. Yep. So you would have read it, read about this already. Uh, with regard to signage at the pound, Bob is still working on that uh, because- I, I got a, I got a, uh, a layout, um, this afternoon, I finally, oh, yes, I finally heard from um, Signature this weekend. And they're probably working finally. They're finally uh, working. And uh, so uh, Doreen, I think is her name, is uh, uh, she sent me a layout. I want, to, uh, uh, want her to do a little tweak on that. And when she tells me I can go up there, I will drop the sign off and uh, get it to put the lettering on and so it'll be done. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it? Uh, with regard to the Paid Nurem Village sign, I spoke to David Russell, a lawyer who has an office in Paid Nurem, who was head of the Business Persons Association, the Business Association. He talked to the owner of the former Woodhouse shop who promised the sign would be up in a week. That was two weeks ago. Interestingly enough, the Farm and Coast Market today in its daily broadcast had a picture of that sign in its former location. Um, I hope something will happen soon. Um, next on our agenda, Jamie is going to report briefly on demolition review and talk about it. He sent it around, I believe, but go to it, Jamie. Okay, and I'll be brief because I know everybody wants to get back to dinner or their business. Um, as Judy said, I did send it around, so you did have copies. Um, and on Friday, Judy and I had about an hour long discussion on things about how we um, uh, shape and define and, 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 and further develop ob objectives. We're, we're going to further along those objectives that we've been talking about for many, many uh, meetings, um, and, and, and those even, um, uh, mentioned at the, at the March meeting and are on in the March ag agenda minutes. So, and that's anywhere from, um, um, you know, faca facade uh, uh, determination or definition and um, even the solar shingles. And we're even, Judy and I even touched on improving uh, the process as we go from, I believe Judy, help me out here, as we go from when uh, the, the time period, that when we go from determining a building, say historic, to when we meet again, 
or do we want to allow ourselves a little more time cushion there, Judy? I think it's a little tight or it's a little confusing. But we want to change all the timing because as yeah. it is now, we have 15 days, I believe, to pick the forms up from the building department and then another 10 days to act on them. It would be easier if we had a longer time to pick up the forms and uh, before we act on them because if we miss that timing and let it run by, then the thing automatically goes through. Yes, okay. Uh, so thank you for that. That, that clarifies that point. Um, and uh, Judy and I also discussed um, the likelihood of taking the town meeting and, 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 and um, increasing the stay from six months to a year. Judy's opposed to it because she feels like it'll reach, have so much opposition that she feels like we should probably take smaller steps and at least address these issues present it to town meeting and can you continue to work on that? She, she sort of won me over the day of the conversation and I leaned her way a bit. Um, I still don't know. I wonder if we should strike while the iron is hot and we at least include um, a, a year long stay, run it up the flagpole as they say, and see if, uh, see if it works uh, with town meeting. I don't know, but that's to be developed. But in summary, um, we will, use the boilerplate bits of the existing bylaw, we'll add these improvements to it. And I think Judy and I concluded that's the most manageable way to do it with our limited staff and limited personnel on the various on the subcommittee or the, or the commission in its entirety. Uh, and that's the way to go about it. And I did mention to her, do we increase the personnel of the committee by adding one other person? Judy seemed to uh, think, so many people were busy or health concerns, this, that, or the other. There's, there's a limited pool from which we can draw. Certainly, so, if somebody wants to join, they're more than welcome. Sure, to join. sure. And then that, that's, where we, that's where we left it. So those are, those are sort of how we're going to focus on this, try to get something done with it. We'll essentially act as editors um, and improve it. And, improve it. and, um, and, and that's that. <laughs> I would add after this, on this, please. Yes, may I finish what I'm saying first? Yeah. I would add to this also that we need to revise the form, the application form. Yes, absolutely. But yeah. I wanted to mention solar panels. That didn't show up on the original list. Uh, I talked to Chris Skelly about this, and he said, Solar panels have nothing to do with demolition delay, period. Okay. Okay. So we don't need to worry about solar panels. Okay. Okay. Great. I have a question. Yeah. Did the uh, Hicksville sign in the cemetery, did the legs get painted? I was there the other day and it looked like they were unpainted. Okay, because I've got a bucket of paint and brushes that I was going to scoot up there and do it on a nice day. So hopefully it's nice tomorrow and that um, I'll try to get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, okay. that concludes my remarks and my report of the subcommittee to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Anything else to add? Um, Anybody want to join that subcommittee? Yeah, two, two questions, if I may, um, about um, uh, the rewrite of the demolition delay. One, uh, one point came up in, in a conversation with Mass Historic uh, with their uh, website, um, uh, and it seemed like a good point. They, uh, whatever the town was, they are uh, give themselves. Um, the opportunity, if a house is deemed historically preserved, um, to photograph and go in and photograph and take measurements, you know, before the actual demolition takes place. And so there's a, I guess they have some sort of a time um, uh, thing set up. And I wondered if that's, if any of you care about um, making that kind of provision, well, putting that kind of provision into the May, may I just add, Bob, I think I saw that email that you shared with Judy and myself. I think that's, that's great. 
if you want to supply us with the copy, by all means. So, so we don't have to go around searching for this and, 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 and reinventing the wheel and we could expedite this. If you can recall uh, what bylaw that was in from what town, cut and paste it for us and poof, it's as easy as that. We'll put it in our draft and, and go from there. Okay, I think I may have deleted it, but I'll uh, see if I can find it. Okay. Uh, my experience, I spent a couple of hours on Saturday morning with my son going over the drawings that have been submitted to us this time. And my son is an architect who works in the Newton, Needham, Wellesley area. And he suggested, and I think it's a good point, that we look up their demolition process, their demolition forms, because he said, in fact, they are much more rigid than anything we are doing. And uh, so I think it would be something that would behoove us to do a long line of what Bob is saying. Other people have some good ideas. Let's look around a bit and see what okay. we can do. Um, there's an easy way to find that information. You go to Preservation Massachusetts website. Uh, Chris Skelly has used their website, you know, Chris from MHC has used their website to post everybody's demolition bylaws and other information that, you know, the towns uh, use. So you go to one place, Preservation Mass, and then from there you'd be able to find all of the demolition delay bylaws across the Commonwealth. Mm. Well, I'm glad he's gotten to do that. We sent our material when he asked for it, but I didn't realize he'd posted it. Do we need uh, an access code to get on that site? No. Okay, and I can I just continue my uh, uh, my the second thing I pondered. Uh, do all towns use 75 years as the as the window? Because I'm just looking. You know, I've been thinking we, you know, we have these bungalows that were built, you know, like just before World War II and just after and so on. And, you know, we should, uh, I'm sort of uh, agnostic about this, but uh, should, uh, should we continue to uh, keep the 75 year um, limit or should we increase it to 100 years? Uh, uh, what is anybody's feeling about? Oh, that? I thought you were going to go the other way and go to 50. No, no, I disagree, no. Bob. Huh? Um, well, certainly, um, well, we're creating a draft. So I would, I, 100 seems uh, too vast for me. 75, I would prefer to keep it at 75 mm -hmm. if I just had those two choices. Yeah, me too. Many towns say that a house has to have a form B or it has to be on the National Register or something like that. But that's never realistic for our town because there are so many. We're a big town. There are so many buildings. Yeah, so uh, we decided a five-year limit. And it still works for us, I think. I think it works pretty well. We do our share of vinyl siding changes, but uh, by and large, it works pretty well. They should banish vinyl siding. <laughs> Well, actually, there are some preservationists who think it's a pretty good solution. It's cheaper than anything else, and someone else at a later date on an historic house could go back and remove the vinyl siding and put proper siding on a house. Carol Nelson gave a long talk at one point. Carol Nelson used to work in this city before she went on to bigger things. And she said it really is a protection, particularly if they slap it right up over the old finish. Don't they uh, kind of wreck window treatments and things when they do that, and eaves and? Well, they certainly wreck corner boards. Yeah. Yeah. It and, depends and on how careful they are. And Jordan, I think I think I think you're right. They do, but the thing is, it's as um, Judy mentioned, um, it all seems to be reversible if the next owner comes along and it's a whole different housing market and things uh, get more gentrified and the vinyl siding does not appeal then it gets you know gets shorn off and there you go you, you start with more <sighs> materials that we prefer to see okay enough said jamie for that yeah i was done a while ago okay anybody have any new business 
Nope. Nine. Are we through? I, Motion to adjourn. Thank I you. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll see you next week at the same time. <laughs>